This is Knowing with Mnemonics. In this video, we will explore a variety of ways that you can use clues to help remember what you have learned. Let's begin by defining what we mean by this tricky to spell word, mnemonics. Mnemonics are clues of any kind that help us remember something. We can associate information with an image, word, or sentence to help us recall it more easily. For example, mnemonics could use acrostics, rhymes, chunking, acronyms, method of loci, alliteration, visual images, or even jokes. Next, let's take a closer look at how some of these learning tools might work for you. Use an acronym to remember by making a word out of the first letters of all the key words or ideas you need to remember. For example, instead of trying to remember a list of the five Great Lakes, you can memorize the acronym HOMES. This will trigger your memory to list each lake that begins with those letters, Huron, Ontario, Michigan, Erie, and Superior. If you need to remember the Great Lakes in order of their size, an acrostic might be helpful. To create an acrostic, make a sentence using the first letter of each word to represent what you want to remember. For example, Sam's horse must eat oats. Superior, Huron, Michigan, Erie, Ontario. One of my favorite acrostics is for remembering the notes on the lines of the base clef staff. Good burritos don't fall apart. This helps me remember the notes G, B, D, F, and A. Can you come up with a sentence to help you remember a concept for your next exam? Rhymes can be a fun way to remember a key concept, and some of these classics may ring familiar, like I before E except after C. 30 days, half September, April, June, and November. Or, in the year of 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. When faced with a tricky new concept that you need to be able to recall on demand, see if you can create a rhyme. Alliterative mnemonic devices use a repeated sound or syllable to group related concepts together. Studies show that alliteration has an incredible power to help us remember chunks of information. Use this power to your benefit by creating helpful alliterative mnemonics that allow you to remember related concepts through a repeated sound. For example, if you are trying to memorize what it takes to make sure your writing is effective, remember the four C's, clear, concise, complete, and correct. Another way to jog your memory is to associate a visual image with whatever it is you need to remember. For instance, you might remember that a Bactrian camel has two humps and a dromedary camel has one if you picture their backs as the letters of their names, B for two humps and D for one. Similar to recalling a visual image, the method of low size strategy works by imagining the things you want to remember as locations along a familiar route or as objects arranged in a familiar place. This method can be especially useful if you know you will be tested on the concepts in a specific location. For instance, you could create a method of loci mnemonic by imagining each of the concepts you need to remember on the test sitting in a specific place in the room where you will be tested. Associate the speed of light with your desk lamp and the speed of sound with the speakers on your computer. Then, when you look at these objects or think about them, you can more easily remember the concept you associated with them. If you need to remember a series in a particular order, try placing them along a familiar route. For example, place each of the planets in order along a route from your house to work, associating each one with a landmark along the way. Then, when you can't remember what planet comes after Earth, 
you can think of Mars sitting next to that big red stop sign at the corner where you turn along the way. Try breaking the information you need to remember into smaller, more manageable chunks. We often do this already when we need to remember a phone number. Instead of remembering a string of 10 digits, it can be easier to remember a chunk of three numbers or four numbers. Finally, a fun way to help remember an important concept is to turn the idea into a joke. For example, have you heard the one about a neutron who walks into a bar? He asks the bartender how much for a drink and the bartender replies, for you, no charge. A joke like this one is good for a chuckle and it can also help you remember that a neutron has zero charge while a proton has a positive charge and an electron has a negative charge. Try making jokes out of your learning material. You might just earn a laugh at the dinner table as well as improve your next quiz score. As always, we are here to help. Visit the Learning for Success Center to learn more about study skills and strategies you can use to succeed in your classes. Thank you for spending a few minutes with us today learning about mnemonic devices. We hope these strategies will help you remember what you have learned and we'll be looking forward to seeing you in the Learning for Success Center soon.